My name is Grace Julian Murthy, and I've been drawing for over 40 years. It all started with macaroni art that I fell in love with in kindergarten. And I was the youngest of 10 kids. I am the youngest of 10 kids. And I always loved art as early as I can remember. And in the second grade, I made an announcement to my parents that I hated math and science to their dismay. Science for me was logical, it was structured, it was boring. For me, art was carefree, it had no rules, it had freedom. I could create my own world. For me, I could make my sky green, my soil red, and I thought there was no way that these two worlds could collide. For me, it was, uh, it was hard to differentiate between these two worlds and having it come together. That was until junior high. And in junior high, I was introduced to geometry. And for geometry, I found really interesting because it spoke about shape and depth and perspective and angles. But the, this was a language of art to me and not of science. So it really confused me and I began to see how a little bit of a connection could be made between the, the two. And my teacher, knowing that I loved art, introduced me to MC Escher. And for me, Escher was amazing. He used tessellating shapes to create forms that transitioned from one to another. It had movement, direction, everything I loved about art, but it also had uh, math involved as well. And where else I got all of my information from before Google was the library. And I'll forever be grateful to the librarians who introduced me to numerous artists that to this day I still love and are inspired with. Uh, some of those artists that I really loved are Vincent Van Gogh. For his use of color and texture, I loved Frida Kahlo's work for her color as well, but her storytelling. And Pablo Picasso, of course, is one of my favorites, and I just loved his shape and his composition in all of his pieces of work. My dad's favorite, though, was always Leonardo da Vinci. He was a scientist, an artist, an inventor, a musician, a mathematician. He was the Renaissance man. He was good at so many things, drawing, painting, sculptures. And his famous pieces, of course, were the Mona Lisa and the, the Last Supper. He created so many uh, medical illustrations, as well as he had numerous inventions. And his medical illustrations are still looked at for its beauty and medical accuracy, even to this day. And for me, studying, studying not just his work, but studying in general, really took me far. And so as an undergraduate and graduate student, I studied graphic design and traditional design. And during this time, I studied lots of theories, such as perspective, color theory, and composition. But one that I always use, even to this day, it's called the golden ratio. The golden ratio is a mathematical equation that's basically pleasing to the eye. It appears in architecture, it appears in the Parthenon, it's used in the world of graphic design, for branding, for so many um, different types of art. But what I found most fascinating about this golden ratio was that it's seen in nature, and of course, it's seen in da Vinci's. Some, there's some debate over whether the Nautilus is actually used that mathematical equation, but you should give it a try and take a look. Uh, it's just amazing because once you start seeing that, um, uh, once you start seeing that golden ratio, you kind of see it in all of its beauty. And something else that I also studied as well was biomimicry. And biomimicry is basically using nature as a base for design. And the designer of Velcro actually took his dog out for a walk and burr plants got stuck to the dog's fur. And that's how Velcro was invented. So design also impacted another um, bullet train in Japan. And the designer had to redesign the train because it had a sonic boom, which was really loud to the residents. And so in designing it, he loved birds. And so he took a lot of the um, different styles of the birds uh, into, the, into the redesign for it, and especially the kingfisher bird. He mimicked the nose of the, uh, of the, of the train into the beak. It became 10% faster, quieter, and used 15% less electricity. 
And so when you look at nature and you combine it with design, it really is quite amazing. So for me, art, math, and science are interwoven in their complexity and simplicity. And so I always thought, you know, left and right brain, how could it combine? But da Vinci taught me that it's that beauty that comes that in between, where it's more like a river, it's kind of like a flow. And so in my own artwork, uh, I'm able to, to draw from nature. So for me, this was sort of um, looking at rain, the rain on my uh, window pane of my window, and I wanted it to mimic sort of all the troubles and all the difficulties we have in life, but that's sort of what makes it beautiful. So I'm able to draw from nature. And for me, this is sort of my version of Escher, using um, two-dimensional sort of flat pieces that are sort of interwoven, interwoven in these geometric shapes uh, that have movement, but they're using um, just solid color. And so that's the, that's the beauty that I loved about ge um, geometry. And this piece as well, it's very geometric, and I used color theory. So that when you look at the piece, there's actually after images. If you stare for it for a while, you'll actually see popcorn popping as an after image. So I was able to utilize um, all, of the, all of my knowledge for it. And I think my second grade self would really have a hard time for me to say this, but I do love art, the art of science and math. And it's actually made me a better artist. The beauty of embracing science and math as an artist, it enables me to expand my creativity, and I think that's what art really is. Thank you.